Good evening, Gateway Church family, and welcome to our online prayer meeting. It's so great to come together tonight to pray and seek the face of our God together as a church family. I'm believing that God's going to do great things as we call upon him. I believe that God's going to move in and through your life as well. If you're watching this tonight and you've got a prayer request and you've got a need, then we as a church, we'd love to pray for you. You can send in your prayer request to us through our website, gatewaychurchcamry.co.uk forward slash prayer requests. Or you can also direct message us on whatever social media platform that you are watching this on tonight. But I'm believing that God's going to do great things. A little later, we're going to just have our time of prayer, praying for different needs. And we're also going to continue our intimacy series tonight as well. I pray that God will speak to us through his word. But let's just begin our time together just by praying and calling upon Jesus. And ask Jesus tonight just to draw near to you. Invite him into your home. Ask him to fill that place wherever you're watching this from with his presence tonight. Because he's a God who longs to draw near. Amen. Let's pray together. Amen. Lord, we just thank you tonight that we can call upon you, but also that we can draw near to you. And it's all through the blood that you have shed for us, Lord Jesus. Through your death, through the, your resurrection, you have made this possible. Lord, we thank you for saving us. We thank you today, tonight, Lord, that we are the children of God. Lord, we thank you for this relationship, Lord, where we can call you our Heavenly Father. That you're a God who loves us and cares for us. And Lord Jesus, you're concerned about every aspect of our life. So Lord, we want to say thank you for that. And I pray as we call upon you, Lord, that we would see your will being done, your kingdom coming. Help us in our praying tonight. Change circumstances and situations. Answer praise tonight, Lord. And Lord, we ask all of this for your glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, tonight we're going to continue looking at this subject of intimacy with God. It's been such a great joy over these last few weeks looking at God's number one priority for each and every Christian, which is for us to have intimacy with him, to know him more and more every day, to grow in our relationship with him. And tonight and over the next couple of weeks, we're going to come towards the conclusion of this, this series and we're going to look at this subject called the outcome of intimacy, or also you could call it the fruit of of intimacy and tonight we're going to be basing ourselves in John chapter 15 and verse 5 these are the words of Jesus and he says this he says yes I am the vine you are the branches those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing the Bible shows us and Jesus shows us here in John chapter 15 that when we spend time with the Lord in prayer and reading his word and worshiping him when we have that time with the Lord and as we grow closer to the Lord, then there'll be this good fruit that is produced within our lives. That actually we can't do nothing without him. But when we're connected with him, when we have intimacy with God, then there'll be this godly fruit that is produced in our lives. I know it's incredible when we look at this fruit that is produced in and through our lives. So you might be wondering tonight, what is this fruit that comes from having intimacy with God? What is the outcome of having intimacy with God? Well, I believe there are three outcomes or three fruit that come from us spending time with the Lord and growing closer in our relationship with him. And so tonight, we're just going to look at the first outcome of intimacy or the first fruit of intimacy with God. And the first fruit is purpose. I believe that we'll discover our purpose. You know, one of the most researched and searched questions on Google by people is, why am I here? Everybody today wants to know their reason for being here on earth. Everybody wants to know what their purpose is, their existence is here on earth. And this has been a question since the beginning of time. People have wondered, why am I here? What is my purpose here on earth? People are desperate to know it. It's embedded in each and every one of us to know our purpose, but also to make an impact as well. That's why we want to know what our purpose is. But did you know that the majority, majority of people actually miss out on their true purpose? Many people miss out on their real purpose. And actually, many Christians, they miss out on their God-given purpose as well. And you might say, why? Why do many people miss out on their purpose? Why do many people just go through life and don't make much of an impact? Or, you know, just go with the flow and just blend into life? Why don't many people discover their actual purpose and discover and then make an impact in this world. Well, the reason for that is because they don't seek the Lord and ask the Lord for his purpose. You see, our God has created us. 
He knows everything about us, as Psalm 139 says. He knows our every thought. He knows every hair on our head. We have been created in our mother's womb. He created us and knit us together in our mother's womb. You know, the Bible says even in Genesis chapter, in the opening chapters, that we have been made in the image of God. We've been made for God and God has created us and he's given each and every one of us purpose. And you know, the Bible shows us time and time again that God has a specific purpose for you. God has a plan for you. He has a purpose for each and every one of us. And if we will seek him and we will seek him alone for this purpose and for our for his plan for our lives, then we will discover it. He will reveal it to us. Note tonight that Google doesn't know what your purpose in life is. Google doesn't have the answer for that. Your parents, even though they might suggest things, they don't know your ultimate purpose in this world. Your boss doesn't, your husband doesn't, your wife doesn't. All those people don't know what your purpose is in life, but it is one who does. I love the words in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. I'm sure you'll repeat these words after me. Many of you know it. And the Lord says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. And did you know that God wants to reveal his plan and his purpose for your life? God wants to reveal it to you. He might not reveal it all at once because he knows that we wouldn't be able to handle it. If we saw every day of our lives, we wouldn't be able to, to take all of that in. But God does want to reveal his purpose to you. Bit by bit, he will slowly begin to reveal his plan to you. And he does that in a place of intimacy. You will never discover the purpose of your life, your God-given purpose, unless you are close to God. It's as simple as that. You won't discover it by attending church, by listening to sermons. You'll only discover God's specific purpose for you when you begin to pray and when you begin to read God's word. And God will tell you his purpose for your life. Nobody else will, but God will reveal it to you. Other people might confirm it, but God will ultimately reveal his purpose to you. And you know, he'll also reveal that purpose when you begin to do this general will of God. When you begin to read the Bible, when you begin to pray, when you begin to worship, when you begin to go to church, when you do the general will of God and tell other people about Jesus, then God will begin to reveal his specific will for your life. But if you want to know his plans and purposes for your life, then you're going to have to get close to him. If you want to know his heart, then you're going to have to draw close and listen to his heart. You'll have to discover his heart for you. And he does that. He reveals his purpose for each and every one of us at our private altars, the place of prayer. You know, the Apostle Paul, he was somebody who was close with the Lord and knew God's specific mission and call for his life. The Apostle Paul would spend time praying and call upon God. You know, even upon his conversion on the Damascus Road, the Lord called him and told him that he's to go and preach the gospel to the Gentiles. We see that there. He goes from being this persecutor of the church to be an apostle in the church. God calls him to ministry, to go and share the gospel, the good news. Paul was a guy who planted churches. He was a guy who raised leaders. He told, uh, he, he encouraged new disciples. Paul was this incredible man from God. But you know, he accomplished all of this simply because he spent time praying and waiting upon God and God would reveal to him his specific will for his life. You know, I love in Acts chapter 20, you read in Acts chapter 20 about the conclusion of Paul's ministry in Macedonia and Asia. Luke, who's the, the gospel writer and also the writer of the book of Acts, he records Paul's journey to Jerusalem. He records about his arrest there and also about his travels to Rome. And Paul travelled to this area for one last time. He's coming towards the end of his ministry time and he travels to these places for one last time. He wants to go and see these churches that he has founded, that he has helped to, to build and establish. He wants to go and see these people. And the reason for that is because Paul cared for them. He loved them. He had God's heart. He loved the people and he wanted to see how they were doing and encourage them once again. They were his great joy. But also they were his heaviest burden as well. You know, he, he broke his heart over seeing people wander away from the faith. He was concerned about the churches. And, you know, Paul, he faced much persecution and difficulties because of his work for the Lord. But, you know, I love what it says in Acts chapter 20, 24, where he's addressing these elders at Ephesus in Asia. And it says this, Acts 20, verse 24, he says, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. You know, I love that. 
that the Apostle Paul knew exactly what his mission was. He knew exactly what his God-given purpose was here on earth. God revealed it to him in that place of prayer, that place of intimacy. Paul is obviously close with the Lord because the Holy Spirit would lead him and guide him. And he, he knew the Lord. He worshipped the Lord. He prayed. He fasted. He was somebody who was close with the Lord. And because he was close with the Lord, he heard the voice of God and knew exactly where to go and what to do. Despite the opposition that came against him, Paul was determined because he knew his clear mission in this life. And you know, this became about because of his incredible encounter on the Damascus Road, but also because of his daily pursuit of Jesus. And you know, as we come to a conclusion of this word today, of this first part, this first outcome of intimacy with God, which is purpose, I want you to know today, and I believe God wants you to know, that he has a specific purpose for your life as well. God's got a plan for your life. He's got a purpose for your life. And God will reveal that plan to you as you draw near to him. Listen to these words in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, that is what the scriptures mean when they say, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. God's got an incredible plan for your life. God's got an incredible mission and purpose for your life. You don't have to go wandering around this earth, wondering what you were meant to do here, what your plan is. You don't have to come up with your own plans. You don't have to search Google. You don't have to ask other people. But as you draw close to the Lord, the Lord will reveal his specific plan for your life. And it's greater than anything you could have imagined, everything, anything you've seen, anything you could have ever come up with. So the purpose of outcome, the first fruit of and the first outcome of intimacy with the Lord is purpose. And next week, we're going to look at the second. But I pray that God has encouraged you through his word tonight. And right now, we're going to just take a minute. And I want to encourage you just to spend this next minute asking God just to reveal his specific purpose for your life. There's going to be some Bible verses that will pop up on the screen. So please take this minute and just pray and ask God, God, what's your will for my life? What's your purpose for my life? And watch how God will begin to speak to you as you open up his word. And as you pray, God will reveal it to you. Amen. Oh man, well, I pray that you've taken that minute just to ask God what his specific will is for your life and make this a daily question in your time with the Lord. Ask God, God, what is it, your will for my life? And once you've discovered what his will is for your life and his purpose for your life, then begin to ask him every day, God, what do you want me to do today? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? What am I to do, Lord? Begin to make that a daily prayer within your life and watch how God will begin to speak to you. Oh man, when right now we're going to just pray for all the different prayer requests that have been coming into us as a church. We're going to be praying for different individuals who've asked us for prayer. And also there are many people who've been sending in prayer requests as well. We're going to be praying for them. I want to pray for you as well tonight. Maybe you're watching this and you've got a need and maybe you haven't sent in a prayer request. That's okay. I'm going to pray for you tonight. I pray that God will minister into your life and your situation that you find yourself in. And you can also send in your prayer request to us. And we're going to keep praying for you. Amen. But let's join together tonight. We're going to pray, continue to pray for Sharon. We're going to continue to pray that God will move in her life. We pray for Pastor Tony and Yolanda. We pray that God will move in Yolanda's life. For Barbara, for Olive's son-in-law, Paul. We're going to continue to pray for Irene. We're going to bring all these needs before the Lord this evening. We're going to ask God to move in Julie's life, my grandfather's life. There's many other people as well who need a touch from God. And, you know, maybe I've forgotten tonight, then I do apologise. But God knows tonight. Just bring your need before the Lord right now. I know that it's difficult to pray in your home. And, you know, there might be many distractions, but just take a minute right now. Join with me and let's pray for all these different people, all these different needs and every other one that has been coming in. And let's believe that God is going to answer these prayers. Amen. Let's pray. 
Lord, we thank you that you are the way maker, the miracle keeper and the promise keeper, Lord. Lord, we thank you tonight that we can trust in you, Lord God, that you are a good God who is concerned about every aspect of our lives. You love us, Lord, and we want to say thank you for that. And Lord, you want to meet our needs tonight. Lord, we're so thankful that we serve a God who does meet needs, who changes lives, who turns the impossible around. Lord, we thank you for that. And so, Lord, we bring all of these people before you this evening. You know their needs. You know the circumstances. Those who are sick tonight, we pray in Jesus' name, shall know your healing touch. And even those who are watching online who haven't sent a prayer request in, would you heal the sick tonight in Jesus' name? Those who need encouragement tonight, I pray you'll bring about encouragement in Jesus' name. Those who need direction tonight and they long to know your specific purpose, I pray reveal it to them, Lord, tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Those who need breakthroughs, Lord God, I thank you. You're a God who restores. You're a God who is able to mend, Lord God. I pray in Jesus' name, would you move in family situations? We think of sons and daughters, husbands, wives, oh God, Lord, loved ones, parents, oh God. We pray in Jesus' name, bring about breakthrough in homes tonight. For your glory, we ask it. Lord, we pray the coronavirus will be eradicated in Jesus' name. We're not going to stop asking. We're asking this, Lord God, that you'll remove it in your precious name, Lord, for you are able to, Lord. Lord, we pray tonight for all those who don't know you as Lord and Saviour, family members and friends, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, would you bring about salvation, Lord God. May we see many people find you as their Saviour. And Lord, would you pour out your Spirit upon our land. Would you revive our nation, Lord, in wrath. Remember mercy, I pray. Have mercy on our land, Lord God. May our land turn to you once again, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. We ask this so your church would be built up, Lord God, and your name glorified. So, Lord, we thank you that we can bring all of these to your feet tonight and that you're a God who hears our prayers and answers our prayers. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your you that is always open to us. We thank you for your mercy and compassion towards us. And, Lord, we love you tonight. We want to give you praise. Amen. Well, it's been such a great joy to come together tonight for our online prayer meeting. I pray that God has spoken to you and that he's met your needs tonight. Our God is a prayer answering God. So let's be filled with faith and believe that he's going to change those situations and circumstances. And let's continue to give him glory and seek his face this week. I'd like to invite you to join us again this Thursday at seven o'clock for our online Bible study with Pastor Rob. It's been great over these last few weeks just diving into Revelation and I know that you're going to be blessed once again as you join us this Thursday. Also, we'd like to invite you to join us for our in-person worship services this coming Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11 a.m. You can book your place for our worship services on our website gatewaychurchcumry.co.uk forward slash reopening. If you aren't quite ready to join us in person yet, then that's totally fine. Please continue to join us as well for Church Online at 5 o'clock every Sunday. But please know that as a church, we are here for you and we are praying for you. Hope you have a great week and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. God bless. Mm -hmm.